is beautiful. Just the beach there. We just got out of a great meeting that was a gathering of the resistance, or whatever you want to call it, people that know what's going on in the Bay Area, and we're on the front lines because we got to stop it. And uh, we were just small time attendees, but there's some unfire activists here that realize that this is where the, the battle is being joined because the, the globalists have been counting on liberal California and in particular the liberal Bay Area to be in the forefront of their fake consensus building for Agenda 21 and smart meters and the New World Order in all of its different camouflaged forms. So we had speakers talking about mostly Agenda 21 and the fake consensus building they do, and also about smart meters and the deceptive tactics that are used there. We got to hear Michael Shaw, who has been battling this in Santa Cruz. He moved into Santa Cruz at the, not realizing that it was a prototype city for all of the globalist agenda. And uh, you, you can really even imagine how long ago that they had planned all this because, as one of the speakers was pointing out, Santa Cruz is kind of, kind of like a mini Berkeley. Uh, you see, the, the college sets the agenda. Of course, everybody knows how liberal UC Berkeley is, but very few people, at least out of sight of California, and then not all Californians understand how liberal the uh, UC Santa Cruz is. I happen to have had a brother who went to UC Santa Cruz and the entire, if you can believe this, the entire college is on a pass-fail basis. No grades whatsoever. Very radical concept in the 70s and uh, I believe they're still on that or maybe they didn't. Maybe they went off of that. I'm not, I'm not really sure. But anyway, that gives you some idea. And the college is beautiful. It's, in, it's among the redwoods and a beautiful campus. But the the whole green agenda is something that had been planned to be the replacement for the communist agenda. And it was really interesting to see a whole room of people that knew that, that understood that that's, that the, the green agenda was just the, the communist agenda disguised. So uh, I had read a book in the 80s that said that's what's happening as soon as the Soviet Union broke apart. There were people that in the Patriot Movement that had known that for a long time. And now people are seeing what's happening in America, seeing what's happening in the Bay Area especially, and are starting to get wise. Uh, our, our friend and Tea Party leader Heather says that they know who she is now, and when they see her in one of these fake consensus meetings, they hide their heads and say, oh no. <laughs> so this is all about helping to unmask the fake consensus and to show the people up for the tyrants that they are. You, you have to have a strategy or you will fail, as Michael Shaw so eloquently pointed out that if you don't educate yourself, they will roll all over you. So this was a group that is getting educated, I wouldn't say it's and we aren't either completely educated. We haven't even been to any fake consensus meetings yet, but that's where the battle is being joined. And yeah, you can either just say, roll over and say, they win, and oops, I guess they get their new world order because the Bible says so, and roll over and maybe you hope for Jesus to beam you up or something. Or you can in, get in the fight. And some speakers gave examples about how, because they fought back, the not only uh, yeah their their agenda is seriously behind schedule. So it's so so important because every time you stand up for freedom, you make the it possible to fight another day. And just rolling over and playing dead is not what you want to do. So we're encouraged. Sure. Great, and uh, it's one one thing that I found particularly enjoyable was hearing a speaker from the Eagle Forum, and I'm an old uh, <laughs> I'm an old abortion fighter from back in the day, and uh, 
Phyllis Schlafly with the Eagle Forum was a great inspiration to a lot of uh, young women who were young when I was young. And Phyllis Schlafly is still in the fight. Yeah. She's 86 years old and she's fighting the New World Order. She's got a whole and, network of people uh, that are doing it, yeah. Yeah, and it, what, she wasn't personally there today, but there was a lady there from the Eagle Forum and they kick ass. So yeah. that was encouraging. One of the things that was most eye-opening to me in, in, well, encouraging because the deception is coming off, was that, uh, I think it was, was it Michael Shaw that, uh, that actually mentioned that the way that this superstructure of quasi-government control had come about in California, where you have the metropolitan area councils, I forget the acronyms, it's the alphabet soup thing, the, there were uh, two three-letter acronyms of, of quasi-governmental coordinating bodies that, that coordinate the planning commissions of the county of supervisors between counties. The, this kind of stuff came about because somebody got to Ronald Reagan and said, uh, or you know, or, or whatever happened in Ronald Reagan's mind, said when he was governor of California, well, we've got to bring in this. The, this other structure because government is outdated and we can't get this stuff done. So they brought in these unelected groups that now, that planning commissions have to get their plans approved by who? Oh, not by the voters, but by some quasi-governmental organization that's not accountable to the people. So all of this, this movement to global control is done through city planning at the local level, and that's where Agenda 21 is uh, being formed and through the, the local representative bodies, but they are, so we need to join the battle at the level of the city councils and county supervisors and get them educated so that they don't let these quasi-governmental agencies come and railroad them. Some examples were uh, one, co one former congressman stood up and said that he had voted for Ickley, but he didn't even know he did. Now, Ickley is the International Council for Sustainable Development, and the acronym means something slightly different. But that whole sustainable development thing is the scam that enables the global controllers to put in their control matrix. So this supervisor had voted for it, not knowing what it was, and I stood up and I said, this is a fraudulent contract. He voted for something that locked them into this quasi, this international treaty and uh, made an in agreement with an international organization. Of course, uh, the I and Italy is for international. So he was railroaded, and that's what these people do. They railroad the people that don't know what they're they're about. So what we need to do is educate the city councilman and the people that haven't already bought in and don't really know what's going on. They need to be awakened. And it's right here in California in the Bay Area where we're in the forefront of the battle. So we're encouraged that, that people are waking up, we're standing up and resisting and we have people coming together from the left and the right. That was a really, really cool thing. So the enemy's plan of divide and conquer is breaking down. And whether, you know, you could always say, yeah, it's too late, we should have done started earlier, but it's, I think if we get the momentum going, it's gonna be unstoppable. And I think we're early enough that it's not a foregone conclusion that we will do some serious setbacks to their plans buying a little bit more time for everybody else, so that's a good thing. That's great, and we have some um, websites, web addresses that we uh, received from some of the people who were there, which we will share with you, and so just some great information. Now, there will be a little bit more information in the details. Yeah. Another, uh, uh, well, something that happened this week that uh, is worth mentioning and I know Don has some opinions about it is the uh, attack on farms that's coming through the requirement of licensing for operating farm equipment so Don do you want to yeah this is craziness I want to just alert people if they haven't already looked into it and I 
don't claim to have really studied it. I, I've heard Alex Jones talking about it this week, and I tweeted the clip from his show about people calling in about it. But the requirement is from the federal government that drive operators of farm equipment on private property are going to have to get federal commercial driver's licenses. This is just insane. You know, the federal government is way overreaching, and that's actually really encouraging because I th really think a lot of farmers are going to stand up to this. The, the one the one caller that stood out to me was he says, I think I've got a bullseye painted on my back. I'm a uh, disabled former Marine and farmer, self-sufficient farmer, and uh, he told an experience about a where he had uh, told some census takers or some other federal people to get off of his property and then he later had a visit with a black helicopter and all that background. But what, what he said was that w the people that he knows don't say much, but they all know what's going on and they're all getting prepared. And they're all doing things like practicing more than normal with their self-defense capabilities. So I'm encouraged that America's not going down without a fight. These guys are, and there's going to be people that believe the propaganda, people that believe that the Tea Party are the real terrorists, and those of us that are awake, we know that the government that has been taken over and that they're the real terrorists, and Al-Qaeda Al -Qaeda is painting the skies for us. So. I'm encouraged to know that I think the enemy is having to move so fast that he's overreaching and people are waking up even faster. And we can't get complacent, but we can be encouraged that uh, people have a sense of purpose now that never had one before. And uh, that's an untapped reservoir of strength that we're just beginning to draw from. That's great. And we have to keep the pressure up, right? Yep. So I think another thing that happened this week that uh, was certainly in the news a lot were the uh, swings in the, in the stock market values, the uh, serious downward move, and then a bit of a bounce. And we had talked last week a little bit about the, the downward move. And um, Don, you want to comment on what you just, see? Just that it bounced around. And the only time that people make money in the market is when they're on the right side of the market. And when it's bouncing around like it did this week, ups and downs, huge by huge amounts, the people that make the money are the people that know which way it's going. And the people that pulled the plug out and didn't bring in the plunge protection team last week are the people that know what's going on this week and can make a tremendous amount of money from the bounces. So it is an inside rigged game, and I don't think they completely know everything that's going to happen, but they're the, ins the insiders are real, and they do make the most money when it's volatile like this. It's, it's not a good situation for the, the general public and the stock market in general. The, the, the true market likes stability, and that's not what we had this week. Well, Ron Paul, uh, there was a, a presidential debate for Republican candidates, and Ron Paul did very well, and he won a straw poll the following day. But of course, everybody knows Ron, Ron Paul, Paul can't, can't win. win, right? Ron Paul can't win. No, Ron, Ron Paul, Paul can't, can't win. win. Ron Paul can't win. Ron Paul can't wait, win. Wait, wait! He won a straw poll. He Ron won Paul a straw poll. He did fabulously in a debate. Uh, of course, uh, Americans can't win. Okay, Mr. The Constitution is outdated. Okay, Mr. Ron the Constitution Paul. Constitution is outdated. Mr. Ron Paul can't win. Who? Who who's your pick for the Republican candidate? Well, and there's now that, the there's governor that guy with from the marvelous Texas. hair from the, the guy with the marvelous hair from <laughs> the governor of Texas. I, I, th I think he. Wow. Rick Perry, no, he's, wow. he he vowed after super highway. He yeah. vowed that he wouldn't run. He's not going to run. He vowed that he wouldn't run for president six oh, months ago. Oh, we'll just ago. have to re dra draft the, the reluctant hero. <laughs> Think he'll do it for us? And, uh, wait, he was somebody's...
campaign manager. Uh, wait. Some Somebody. Al Gore guy. The, oh yeah, the, 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 Al the, the famous, Gore. Uh, the famous climate, climate master. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and you know it, it's probably worth saying a little bit about um, about the presidential race between George Bush and Al Gore, the famous uh, hanging chat and all that. Um, I believe that there was a genuine competition between the two, that there were some globalists who were pushing for Al Gore's uh, carbon tax to be moved into the forefront, and some who were pushing for the Bush's war machine to get amped up a little faster, and lo and behold, the Bush's war machine won. Do you, do you want to comment on that? Well, yeah, I think there are these these power struggles, and uh, I, I don't know who backed Gore in terms of whether Rothschild was for Gore or Bush. He, he may have very well have been for Gore and said, no, I want my man this time, I want Obama. But the, they're getting the, the same agenda through, and they never betray each other, actually fight each other. If, if anybody expected Obama to, to actually do anything about 9-11 truth and find out what really happened, of course, they were sadly naive and misinformed, whatever. But, the, and the voting, the voting elections really are rigged at a, a pretty serious level. There is, there is election fraud in this country, and that probably happened big time in 2004, and, and probably in 2000 as well. So, um, I don't think we've said anything in a while about you know like fluoride in the water or organic yeah. food or do you, do you do you want to talk about that a little bit or whatever? Yeah, you the, want. there's a tendency when we talk about something once to think well then everybody knows that and we move on and we just try to stay current. But there's the whole idea of the your diet is so important and the food is being seriously destroyed and that you you have to make a point of being proactive about your health or it's going to go downhill and we're we're on a track that is getting better and better and we're encouraged so I actually had to tell somebody was like conversation with uh, people at work was one one uh, person found out how young somebody else was and go, you're a baby. And then I'm right there, how old are you, Don? And I'm, like, I'm only a year younger than Henry. And everybody's like, whoa, I thought you were much younger. So, <laughs> hey, I know I probably. 28, that made me feel right? Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe she thought I was in my 40s and I was younger than her, I don't know. But Good. yeah, you gotta gotta take care of your health, and I still got a ways to go. But I am uh, really encouraged. That's great. And yeah, the dry skin brushing is good. I just we just started. Oh, yeah, why that. didn't you talk about that's, that a little bit? Oh, uh, that's not. I can't really talk a whole lot about it. Just that it's a uh, you. Just say you, what you, you do and sure why. Oops, you're, you're, <laughs> it's the easiest way to detoxify by doing dry skin brushing every day, and I read. Some, something that I'd, I'd known this years ago and then forgot about it. That's how a lot of this stuff is. And and I read something in Mike Adams' Natural News article that I found out, oh yeah, I, I could start doing that. And that would, uh, he said, cleanse the easiest way to cleanse your system. And he gets your lymph moving, which is uh, really when you don't have that much activity. And I have a sedentary job, even though I walk every day it noon I still sit a lot so getting your lymph flowing by doing that dry skin brushing and really your skin is your largest eliminative organ so it really helps to stimulate the circulation to cause the toxins to move through your body through your skin and that's what the dry skin brushing does so I've really noticed that since doing that for about a week or so that uh, I do feel that stimulation in, in the skin and notice that it does make a difference and I know that's going to pay benefits. 
That's great. And I, I want to say just a little bit about organic foods. And I, I think that a, lo a lot of uh, the attack on small farms is to, well, the overall, it's to control the food supply. Yeah. Uh, but it also is, it's very difficult for organic farmers to overcome. Most organic farmers tend to be small. Uh, they tend more to be family farms and uh, getting rid of the small farms is a good way to get rid of organic foods and we don't eat completely organic uh, probably 30 to 40 percent and it, it is I do consider it to be very important and it's so much better for the environment the things that are that are foisted off on us is sustainability. You know, Monsanto and the GMO people, and they're all they're all in the sustainability camp. Well, that's how is that sustainability? They they are doing more to destroy the environment than pretty much anybody, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I want to say my thing about sustainability for the. You know that this idea that stack of packed housing next to mass trans transit and having these vast amounts of open space is supposedly sustainable when you have this huge agribusiness that's to me the opposite of sustainability because you've got this highly structured infrastructure that takes people away from the land and sustainable living really to be truly sustainable needs to be people close to the land scattered sprawled if you will across, <laughs> a, a, across the you country you said a dirty word <laughs> across the country in in family farms that was Thomerson's, Thomas Jefferson's ideal for America and I agree with it and he said that if we ever have if an America ever gets packed into cities like we are in Europe then we will be just as oppressed and it'll be just as tyrannical as in Europe. So that wow. really is Agenda 21 is the opposite of Thomas Jefferson's vision for America and, and I don't know about it anybody else but I'm with Thomas Jefferson not the United Nations. I'm with so Thomas means, Jefferson that, too. That makes me a terrorist folks. <laughs> we saw a very good film last night. We we did see some other films this week that were really not that significant or mentionable. Not terrible, but uh, just not great. But last night we watched Winter's Bone. It's a 2010 film. Uh, there was nobody in it whose name I recognized or face I recognized. But it was a fantastic film and one of the most real films I've seen in a long time. It's not. Uh, it's not real, like horrible, like you know, terribly gory or anything. It's just. Um, it's just very, you know, family life and struggles. Uh, there are some liberty issues there, and uh, basically, it's in the film. People, the the people, more or less, handle their problems on their own without a whole lot of government intervention. Yeah, this was, it takes place in somewhere in Appalachia, you get the feeling. It was Missouri. Oh, was it Missouri? Yeah, okay. yeah. So it was on the outskirts of that. But it, it was definitely rural and with rolling hills and woods and stuff. And it was a, uh, an oldest daughter who had to take care of two younger siblings and her father had just gotten out of jail and was supposed to testify and had gone missing and so she's hunting for him but he uh, he had gotten caught in the crossfire so to speak between wanting to inform on the local drug kingpin and to uh, I'm gonna to, edit this out <laughs> you give so much away no I'm not I'm just setting the story I'm not telling I'm not telling what's happening I mean, you didn't say anything to, to <laughs> to create interest so this is to create interest anyway okay. so so she she is has has this burden and this is a young woman who th thinks about joining the army as a way to 
to solve the, the huge financial problem that she's got. And it's just very, very real. And the it was taken from a book. So, yeah, it was all... The storyline was, was really well done from an author that obviously was, seemed to tell a very good story. But very believable and makes you think about some of the issues about living life in with the pressures that we have today. Yeah, there's there's a lot about the drug culture and I told when we first started to watch I told Don it was like a Humboldt County that wasn't fun. <laughs> um, but it, you know the the drug culture in many respects in this film is is reminiscent I think of the of the moonshine culture and I'm not sure how accurate this film is. If it's accurate, there are people living a lot closer to the land and a lot um, more unplugged from society yeah, they, and culture they, than I realized. They were so poor that they had to shoot squirrels and you actually see them skinning a squirrel. So if you don't like that, you might not want to watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, great film though. It, amazing film. We we gave it five Winter's stars. Winter's Bone. Winter's Bone. Yeah. So, do you have any final words about uh, uh, being a terrorist or revolutionary or anything? <laughs> Just be one, right? <laughs> <laughs> you are the resistance. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thank you.